Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to take you through how to render this Ferrari 599 GTB that I recently finished modeling to take it from this, the clay model, to this, the final render. This is going to involve doing all of the lighting, the shading setup, uh, some of the very basic texturing as far as you know putting on things like the emblems and whatnot and hopefully we'll be able to squeeze this all into one part I may have to break it up into two parts depending on how far along we get but we'll just kind of see how it goes so the first thing that I want to do is jumping over to blender here oops here we go you can see my my final model here and it's you know it's fairly high poly not all of the details there you can see that the interior is just a very very basic uh, interior just enough to give us a silhouette uh, at some point I do intend to finish modeling the rest of the interior but for our shot that we're doing today this will work just fine uh, basically everything else is there aside from the inter un underside of the car of course it's just got a, a blocked in plane just to you know exclude any any highlights or shadows or you know light passes that might be coming through the car and happen to hit the ground plane there we don't want that so the first thing we're going to set up the basic lighting the basic lighting that we're going to use for this is a combination of a few lights and again this is all going to be rendered in cycles and for the lighting also note that I do have a ground plane setup. It's just basically a you know a fairly normal infinite ground plane swoosh sort of thing. Uh, very simple to create, covered in a lot of tutorials, but basically it's just an extruded plane that extrudes up with a nice subsurf modifier on it to keep it nice and smooth. Uh, very, very basic, that's all it is. Just gives you a nice gradient in the background. Um, so for the lighting, we're going to use a few lights. Number one, we're going to use a soft box just to kind of give us some good... Um, even illumination all around. We're also going to be using the global, a little bit of global illumination in cycles, but not too much, just enough to, uh, you know, help kind of fill in some of the darker spots. But the soft box is going to give us our main source of illumination. Then we're also going to be using a fill light to really kind of focus the light in on the front of the car. And then we'll be using a key light for the reflections that will actually be picked up by the car paint to give us the the nice uh, highlights that you see here along the ridges, you know, really highlighting the, the curves in the car. And then we'll be using a couple small lights along the front just to kind of help highlight some details such as the front emblem, the grates back in here, etc. So first thing that I want to create is I want to create the softbox. The softbox is pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, add in a mesh and a cube. And then on this cube, we're going to just scale it way up to be, say, something about like this. Ought to be right around, you know, about 10 times the size of the car. And then we're also going to scale it down along the Z axis just to bring it down a little. You know, I want a little bit more light focused on the top of the car than the sides of the car. So I'm bringing this face a little bit closer to it. And then we're going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. And let's just select this bottom side of the cube. We're going to hit X, delete the faces. And then let's also just for, you know, well, no real reason, but just to keep it nice and close to our actual light source, we're just going to bring the bottom of the, the cube up a little bit. And this is then going to be our softbox. And for the softbox, all we want to do is we want to add in a very basic emission source to it. So the first thing, let's go ahead and and start this view rendering and give it just a moment while it builds the BVH. One thing you will notice on this car is that since it's fairly high poly, uh, it, it will take a little bit to build the BVH each time depending on your processor. This machine, while I'm, I'm using a GTX 580 as the video card and so it renders very, very quickly, but the processor is starting to you know get a little slow. It's starting to show its age and so it takes me a little bit longer to build the BVH, but the rendering is nice and quick. Okay, so right now you can see it's just completely black. And this is because, number one, oops, let me just remove the existing world because we don't want to see that that's there. I'll just create a new one so it's default. Um, we're going to set the world up later. But you can see that everything's just completely black right now because I've completely blocked all light from my car. So what I need to do is, with the cube selected, for one, let's go ahead and name this. So we can hit period over the outliner and that will highlight the currently selected object. And we'll just name this as light underscore softbox. Again, I, um, as I mentioned in previous tutorials, I like to prefix most of my objects uh, based on either the section of the model, the type of model, whatever. So in the case of lights, I'm, I'm gonna prefix them all with light 
such that they're all in the same place within the outliner. With the materials then, we're going to add a new material, and I'll call this the same thing, so this will be light underscore softbox. You can see it's still rendering here. And we're going to set the surface to be an emission right here. And immediately you can see that we have a very basic light source enabled. Okay, cool. Uh, well, we've got one problem with this, and one is that it's cutting off our background right here. So the way that we fix this is we just hide this object from being shown in the camera. So let's just go over to the, ob the object properties here. And we want to disable a couple of the ray visibility things here. The ray visibility, in case you don't know, allow us to restrict what types of light rays can basically see this object. So if we disable camera, the camera can no longer see this object. Great. Well, the other thing that we want to do is we want to disable it for a couple other passes here. One, we don't want it to cast shadows by any other lights, such as the world and whatnot. So let's disable shadow. Now, in this case, that won't affect much because we don't have any real like directional light sources that are pointing through this. But just for safe measure, in the case that we do, we're going to disable shadow. Next, we also don't want this to show up in glossy reflections. Um, since I want this just to be a basic, you know, kind of an, an additional global illumination of sorts. I don't want it to be picking up highlights or reflect in the car or anything like that. So we're going to disable glossy. But before I do that, let's just go and select the car model real quick here. And, or we can see, you know, just we'll grab the hood right there, the panel front hood. And let's just give this a very, very basic glossy material. So we'll just click new and add in glossy just so that you can kind of see what this will do. And you can't see a whole lot. And other than that, it's basically reflecting this perfect color right now, this exact color of this. So if we disable glossy, though, just say disable glossy, it will no longer pick up that reflection. And you can see now it's actually reflecting the world. Well, you know, right now we don't want it to reflect the world, uh, but that's going to be fixed later. So for the time being, on this glossy shader, we're just going to hold down shift, click the X, and that will force delete uh, that material such that if we save and reload the file, that material will be removed. Okay. So that gives us our softbox. But right now the softbox is a little strong. You can see it's kind of blowing out a lot of the details. So let's take the energy down to, say, 0.2. That way it's much more subtle and it gives us a lot better con control over our lighting. Because this way, you know, it's not overpowering anything else. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a very slight bluish tint. Just very, very slight. And this is just going to help with some of the overall tone in the image. Uh, I'm going to be using a slightly blue world as well. And so this is just going to kind of complement that as well. Or not complement, but, you know, help be consistent. Okay, so that gives me my softbox. Next light that I want to set up is to do the fill light. And the fill light is going to sit roughly over... Uh, the front of the car and is going to be just a large plane. So let's just hit Shift A, add in a mesh and a plane. We're going to scale this up then, just something right in there, and then we'll move it up along the Z axis. Let's go ahead and name this. So we hit period over the outliner and we'll call this light underscore fill. And then we'll give it a new material and this will also be light underscore fill. Okay, and we'll give this the emission shader. Yeah, all right, immediately you can start to see we already have much more dynamic lighting because we have, you know, the fill or the softbox is helping kind of fill in the space. And then we also have the, um, the, the fill light that is then highlighting some of this. And that's all fine and dandy. But we want to go ahead and uh, adjust a little bit more. For one, I want it to really, or we need to decide where we want to focus our viewers eyes on the image and in this case with this car you know one of the most important things is the front end here you know we've got the logo right here we'll have the emblem here on the side we have the, the wheel slightly turned towards the viewer to kind of engage the viewer and you know highlight some of the details in here there'll be the logo right at the the wheel cap you know, we've got all these different details that we really want to bring the viewers attention to and so we don't want to just illuminate the entire scene because that would you know we would take away some of the, the viewers' focus. They would just kind of globally focus on everything, and that's boring. We don't really want to do that. So what we want to do is we want to focus the light a little bit more on this front end. The way we'll do this is we're going to rotate this plane. We'll just rotate it like this, and we're going to pull it forward, and we'll take it down lower a little bit. And that's going to help just kind of focus the light in right here. 
And then I'm also going to go switch over to the top view, and we're going to scale the plane up to be about three times the length of the plane of the car. Let's also go ahead and disable it in camera view so we don't see it right here. So we'll just disable camera. And then to help bring the focus just in on the front of the car, not on the sides of the car, I'm going to scale it along the x-axis to be about twice the width of the car, something about like that. There you go. So now you can see it's kind of, it's, it's ignore, not ignoring, but it, there's less light here on the sides. So that gives us a little bit more control and just gives us a slightly nicer result. For this fill light, um, we're going to, let's move it up just a bit more. We'll maybe move it up to about right there. You know, the further we get away, the further the light is away from the object, the less light it's going to reflect. And the other thing that we're going to do is in the light path or in the ray visibility, again, we don't want this to be picked up in glossy reflections. We don't want this to be providing the highlights. We're going to use a very specific light for that alone. So again, I'm going to A, disable it on the camera. I'm also going to disable the glossy reflections, and I'm going to disable the shadow. So again, it's not uh, being, it's not casting shadows or anything like that. And then for the light fill, we're going to go ahead and give it a strength of two. And that will seem pretty blown out at the moment. But once we add in some of our car car paint shaders and such, uh, that won't be nearly as blown up because right now we don't have any materials on this. And so it's just basically reflecting everything and whatnot. And so, you know, there's a lot more light being reflected than there will be once we add in our shaders and such that then, you know, send the light in different directions and whatnot. All right. So this gives us our basic lighting for the moment. Let me, okay. Just wanted to check something real quick. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and set up the world. So on the world, it's going to be fairly simple. Um, what we're going to do is first in the world, let's go ahead and set, uh, well, we're going to use two things for this. Uh, we're going to use a, a sky texture and an RGB color to help kind of blend the colors between the two. So the first thing let's do, let's add in the sky texture. So from the world settings, if we just go to the color channel here and click this button, we can then choose sky texture. And that will immediately add in the sky texture, which is all fine and dandy. Um, but it's not going to, you know, give us a whole lot just yet. For one, actually, you'll notice right now, I believe if we hide this, right, so currently the car is not actually being illuminated via uh, the uh, the world because of our softbox. And that may be okay. You know, part of the world is going to be reflecting in the background. Uh, we could probably, you know, if we, yeah, I don't know that we can actually change this based on the, on that. We could probably do it with the ray visibility, but for the time being, let's just go ahead and hide the softbox to set up the world to kind of get a little bit more what we want. Okay, so for the world, sorry, I just had to double check something real quick, which is probably why you saw a little blip in the video. Uh, but for the world, we want to do a couple things. And one is to make this a little less blue. So for the blue, we're going to go ahead and set the turbidity up to three. And that will just basically give us a little bit more yellow in the sky. Um, you know, that's it, not actually what it does, but that's the effect of it. And then we're going to take our normal node here that we can drag around for the sky. And we're going to take it down to give us kind of a, you know, almost evening night sky. Say something about like that. Or maybe even a little bit stronger. Right about in there. Okay, I think that will probably work just about. Because we're actually going to then mix this sky with another color to actually control the background color. So let's pull down our nodes here. You can see I've got a node view set up. Switch over to the material nodes and then to the world nodes. And we can see our couple of shaders right here that we have. We have a sky texture input for the color. We have a background for the actual energy for the global illumination. And then we have a shader output. So what we want to do is we want to add in another color here that then we can use to mix with the sky just to give us a little bit more color control. So we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to add in a color and a mix, and this will just be the what we mix the two colors with. So let's just drop that on there, and that will then just mix it in with the white. And let's hit Shift A, add in a input and an RGB. This RGB then, the color code that we're gonna use, I'm just gonna copy it from my 
my previous file just so I don't have to you know spend time tweaking it but it's this kind of dark grayish blue here and let's just feed this in to this here and that will then immediately mix the two but that's not quite enough you know I want to get a little bit more just regular blue in here so I'm going to boost this up to say 0.7 or so and I think that ought to be just about right but the other thing is you know this feels weird because again as I pointed out a moment ago the the softbox is actually blocking our rays right now so we're not getting quite the result that we would like so the way that we'll fix this is um, I th that was actually partially what I was double checking a moment ago but we can fix this if we just go over to the object properties and we also want to disable under rays vi visibility diffuse this way the diffuse rays won't be reflected off this and the diffuse rays instead that are being cast by the world are just going to go straight through this and thus are also illuminating the car and the plane and whatnot and so like if we were to actually just take this sky texture directly into there you can then see it affecting the actual car color a lot more in this case that's not what we want so let's just take that in there and that ought to be good okay and Next, so that's the world. So that's all we're going to use for the world. It's pretty bland and boring. There's not a whole lot there, uh, but it ought to be, you know, it's, it'll be enough because a lot of it is going to show up in the actual reflections that we're going to be doing. So now we have our basic lighting set up minus one of them. We don't have our actual key light yet. That's going to provide the reflections. So let's do that now. The key light is fairly similar to the fill light in you know the way that it's created it's still going to be just a plane but the the key with this is that key is the way that we position it so the first thing let's do is let's add another plane so we're going to hit add mesh plane and then we will just move this up to above the car and sorry getting a little bit slow right there for a moment All right, let's just stop this rendering rather than try and do too much at one time. There we go. Okay, so now I can just move my plane up. So I'll move it up, say, just about right in here. And then I'm going to scale it up to, again, be about three times the width of the car or something similar. I might scale this one up just a little bit as well. All right. And then we're going to also make it... Um, rectangular so we're going to scale it along the y-axis to again be about twice the length of the car or three times the length of the car approximately and on the material then we're going to give it again an emission material so we'll click new this will be light underscore key let's also name this in the outliner so light underscore key and the light is going to be just an emission and we're going to set the strength to two and that's all it's going to be so now let's render this again but we're not going to see a whole lot just yet just because we don't you know we haven't set up our car paint shaders or anything like that so it's going to be fairly boring uh, but you'll start to see what we're getting at as soon as this finishes building the bvh okay almost there um so all right so now you can see that again it's kind of overpowering our car so let's on the door or on this front panel here for the front side let's go and add in just a glossy shader again again this is just to so that we can test kind of how our lights being picked up so you can see here how the lights being reflected by the in the lights here such that we can get you know this really nice kind of um, highlight effect on it and that'll look pretty good for the time being you know right now this is a hundred percent reflection which you know we're not going to be using but that's what it is at the moment so let's go ahead and just ignore that and let's begin setting up our car paint shader you know we'll adjust the lights more as we go along so for the car paint this is where it gets tricky and I have to give full credit to a couple of users on the blender artist forums for coming up with this and apologies at the moment I can't remember your usernames exactly but in the idea car paint shaders thread um, they're the guys that came up with it so they get full credit for this absolutely so with the car paint car paint is is a tricky thing uh, because there's a couple of things that you know go into it one it's reflective well reflections are not a problem in in cycles uh, but it also it has layers to it where most car paint has basically a reflective layer a speckles layer and then also a glossy layer over that in this case we're not going to be worrying about the speckles um, 
the speckles are something that you can set up if you want, and I encourage you to check out the f the thread on Blender Artist. Uh, I'll try and remember to put a link to it in the description for the tutorial so that you can just go directly to it, but it's Idea Cycles Car Paint Shader. Uh, and then it's a bunch of, you know, it's a lot of development on how to create this car paint shader. So what we want to do is basically we want to, A, have good control over the color mixing and have some variation in colors, such from different angles, you'll see subtle, you know, subtle different colors in it. Uh, and then we also want to have very good control over the reflections. So let's first just create a new material, and we're going to name this as car paint. And on this material then, we have a couple of key things. First of all is the base color. The base color is our diffuse right here. Um, or actually, well, not quite. Um, the base is actually two colors that are going to be fed into this that's going to give us a slight variation uh, between, you know, like highlighted areas and whatnot. So what I would like to do is First of all, we're going to use the base color, but we're going to input two separate colors into this diffuse, and then we're going to mix those colors based on, you know, if they're facing the, the camera or not. So let's just hit Shift A and input a shader, or excuse me, a color and mix. On this mix, let's just feed it right into the, the diffuse here. And just so that we can see this across the entire car, let's go ahead and in the outliner, we're just going to select all the panels here. So I'll just hit B select all the panels like this, and then we're going to hit Control L and make links to the materials. Oh, actually that seemingly did not work. So let's just, we'll just shift select all of them like this. And it's the front hood that has the material. And there we go. And so now we'll hit Control L, make links to the material. So now they should all get the exact same material, maybe. Yes, seemingly did not update in the render though. So let's just go to restart rendering this again. You can see that each one of these then has the, has the shader. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. And what we're gonna do then is we're going to, first of all, input two colors here. So let's just grab a nice kind of Ferrari red. So we'll grab say something like, about like this, you know, not not orange, but kind of right in between orange and pink. All right, that'll probably work right about there. Then the second color, we're gonna just copy this color and then paste it in. So it's Control C and then Control V, and then we're gonna make this one slightly darker. So that'll be slightly darker. This one we can make slightly brighter, something about like that. Okay, and right now it's just a solid mix between these two. But what we wanna do is we wanna mix these such that if the surface is facing the camera, we see this color. If it's facing away from the camera, we see this color. The way that we do this is we hit Shift A, add an input, and a layer weight. And layer weight's a pretty cool node that allows us to have this facing option. So we can just choose facing right here. And now you can see that there's some subtle variation here where these ones that are closer to the camera have more, have this, you know, brighter color than the ones away from it. And so this also just helps us give focus to the car paint. And you can adjust the slider here where 100% is just, just this one, zero is just the other one. And then we're gonna set this to say 0.1. You know, we don't want a lot of variation. We just want just a little bit. And that's gonna be the first part of our shader. The next part is we wanna do the same basic thing, but with a glossy shader. So let's just add in a, let's duplicate these two. About like this, we're gonna hit shader, glossy. And let's then just feed this one into the surface and this one in here. And this one, Oops, I didn't connect that. There we go. Okay, so now we can see the glossy coming through. And for these ones, we're gonna give these colors slight variation. So maybe I'll make this just a little bit darker and this one just a little bit darker as well. Just so, because these are gonna get mixed together. So we don't wanna have the exact same colors in here. And we're gonna set this facing all the way up to say 0.6. So that way we get some fairly good variation in here. All right, now I know this doesn't look like much yet, but you can already see how, you know, I was talking about, you know, being blown out, where you can see the windshield here is very blown out, whereas the regular car is not. And that's where, you know, this is, uh, once you start adding in the shaders, you start getting a lot better lighting. So that's where you can't, you can't base your lighting exclusively on what it looks like with no shaders, or else you're just gonna get a pretty crappy result. 
All right, so this is the majority of our shader, but we want to do a little bit more now. For one, we want these glossy reflections. We want them to be picked up based on a index of refraction. So basically, we, you know, a little bit of a glossy coating. So we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to add an input and a Fresnel. And then just feeding this into the roughness will give us slightly better reflections here, where depending on, you know, the way the light's going over the surface, the way the camera's looking at it, etc., we'll see, uh, you know, that will determine how the reflections show up. And we're going to set this IOR to about 3. That will make the reflections a little bit softer. You can see if I set this to 1, they become very, very harsh. If I set it to 5, they're really soft. So we're going to set it to about 3. We don't want them crazy harsh. We just want them soft enough. You know, keep in mind that this is the, the underlayer of our car paint, where this is just kind of a glossy, you know, reflective paint that's being coated over the metal. And then we're going to layer a, you know, a highly reflective clear coat on top of this. And that's where the next step comes in. So this next step is we're going to add in a shader and a mix shader. And we're going to drop this right on top of here. And we're going to feed the diffuse into the top one, like that. And that will then mix the two. Okay. And this is just going to be our fine tuned control to allow us to just kind of see, you know, which one we like. This one is all the way reflective. This is not reflective at all. And so we're just going to say, we're going to start by setting this to about 0.3. You know, we don't want too much again because we don't want this controlling too much of our reflection. Then we're going to duplicate this mix shader again, and we're going to drop it in here. And then we're going to add in our glossy coating. So the glossy coating is done the same way. If you, if you watch my headphones rendering tutorial, uh, the way we do the solid, you know, a plastic shader is you add a glossy shader with the Fresnel value such that the glossy is picking up the reflections, but then it's basically being added onto the, the diffuse based on the Fresnel. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to add in another shader and glossy. And we're just going to pull that into there. And we're going to set the roughness on this just to zero for the timing. And immediately you can see this starts to work. But, you know, we don't want this weird mixing because we only want the white highlights. So we're going to mix this based on a Fresnel input. So input and Fresnel, once again. And we can just, we're going to put this to say 1.5. But we can, you know, you can tweak it as you wish. But for the factor then, we're going to feed this right into the factor there. And immediately we have a fairly cool, nice car paint. Now, you know, we could tweak some things if we wanted. Uh, you could switch between the Beckman and the GGX. There's not a huge difference between these. Um, personally, I don't know which one I prefer. You know, the, the, the difference is fairly minor, but just play with it, see what you like. Uh, you can set the, the roughness on these. If you don't want a perfect reflection, you could say set the roughness to like 0 0.001, and that would just give a subtle, subtle blending. Or, you know, obviously if you set it to say 0.1, then you've got a much softer reflection. So, you know, it's going to depend on the type of car you're doing, what what you're trying to achieve, etc. So, you know, just keep take all those things into account. In, in this case, I'm going to set this reflection to 0 0.0075 just to get you know, that's, that's the result that I did in my testing, and it worked pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. And that is our car paint shader, for the most part. Uh, so let's save our file now, and we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step that I want to do is to add in the background shader. The reason for this is right now, you know, with the shader like it is, it's hard to really kind of tell what we're getting or, you know, what looks good. And so I want to add in some reflections in here just to, you know, really kind of bring it together. Way we're going to do that is we're going to add in a new shader on the ground. And we'll just we'll click new. Let me drag in the outline up here just to get a little bit more space. We're going to name this as ground. And we're going to give this a glossy shader. And immediately you can see that our, our background has changed completely where now it's reflecting that kind of bluish gray environment we had versus the weird kind of yellowish. And we're going to set this to say 0 0.03 just to give us a really nice, just barely soft reflection, but just enough. And then by, by adjusting the, co the color here, we can adjust the color and also the strength of the reflections here. So, you know, you could take this down, you could take it up. Um, personally, I think just about a 90% gray is going to work pretty well, you know, because once we add in the other compositing and such, then that's going to feel pretty good. We want a little bit of color in here because that's what's going to, you know, if we look at our final image, here, we've got these kind of splots of blue here that feel really good. And that's where those are going to come from is from these kind of reflections in here. 
So that's all we're going to do for that for the time being. Next, let's go ahead and start in on the glass. So the glass is, you know, notoriously a pain in cycles for numerous reasons, or well, not in not in cycles specifically, but just glass in general, no matter what render engine you're using, is a pain. Glass or cycles is wonderful because it you know gives us a head start. It has a glass shader, but the the regular default glass shader is not going to quite do it for us. So let's start with the regular glass shader. So, so with the window selected, let's add a new shader, and this is just going to be glass. And on this glass, then it's going to be fairly simple. Um, or actually, you know, let's go ahead and call this glass underscore windows, just in case, because we're probably going to use a slightly different one for the headlights and such. Because you know, this glass is actually glass. I want it to act like glass. But most headlight covers and things like that are some kind of um, composite or a plastic, and so they're going to reflect slightly differently than regular glass. So we want the window glass to be like itself, and then this glass will be um, more of a plastic. So on the windows, we're going to give it a glass shader, and immediately it'll it'll just start to work and be pretty good. The main main thing to note is I do have thickness on these windows. If you don't have thickness, it's not going to behave properly because it's not going to have any volume and just excuse me, the, the index of refraction just won't, won't work. And immediately, you know, that starts to work and come together. But one thing with cycles in and glass is that light doesn't penetrate through glass very well. And whether this is a, a downfall in cycles or just, you know, inherently the nature of the shader or, you know, whatever it may be, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to allow a little bit more light to come through here rather than just casting shadows. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to basically tell this shader to not cast shadows so much and to be transparent where it would cast shadows. Now that may sound confusing, but the way that we're going to do is we're going to add in a shader and a mix, and we're going to drop that in the middle. Then we're going to also add in a transparent shader, and this transparent shader by default is just completely transparent, uh, and we're going to drop that then into the bottom node. And now we just have a 50-50 mix where 50% of it is glass, 50% of it is just 100% transparent. And it just kind of looks funky. But we're going to then mix these two based on a light path again. And a light path, you may remember, is essentially the same thing as these ray visibility things. Where it allows us to restrict or basically mix these based on the type of light. So the one we're going to use is the shadow ray. So in this case, basically, if the ray is a shadow caster or it's you know, going through a surface and then casting a shadow, it's going to determine which one of these is going to be red. And if we just drop in the shadow ray, now on the inside, where it would cast shadows and just make it really, really dark and not cast shadows completely, you know, it's not even removing shadows, but basically it's making the, the glass more susceptible to pass through light or for light passing through it and just helps in uh, light up the interior a little bit better okay uh that does it for the actual glass that's all we're going to do for that for the time being uh, we might you know make some adjustments a little later down the road but not yet the, the next prominent one is the wheels you know the wheels are fairly major it's it's metal it's really you know they really show we want to be sure that we get them right so on the wheels let's add a new shader and this one is going to be wheel underscore rims. You know, we're going to have multiple wheel shaders in here. So we want to just be sure that we name them appropriately. And this one, we're just going to make it, it's going to be really easy. We're just going to make it a glossy. We're going to set the glossy, you know, if at zero, it's really, really reflective. Uh, at say 0.5, it's not very reflective. It's very matte. Uh, in this case, in the final render that you see right here, it's 0.3. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of, after, you know, after sleeping on it and looking at it, I don't think this is quite reflective enough. It looks a little too matte, almost, you know, it doesn't look quite like metal. So I'm going to give it a little bit more reflection. I'm going to give it at, say, 0.2. Just add a little bit more reflection there and make it a nice metal. Then we're also going to take the color down, just give it a little bit more gray in there, and that will be all that we need to do for that. And you can see that since these wheels are linked, uh, they're all reading the same mesh data, that material has already been applied to all of those others. One other small thing I'm going to do, just make my viewport easier to navigate, is on the softbox, I'm going to select it, 
And underneath the display section in the object properties, I'm going to set the type to wire such that even in a shaded view, it shows up wire. I'm going to do the same thing with each of my lights here, just so that I can always kind of just focus on the car. And in fact, I'll do the same thing with the background. And this doesn't affect the render view, it only affects the, the, the viewport. This just allows me to always focus in on the car where I want to focus. All right, let's now do the tire. You know, that goes right in hand with the 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 wheel. So with the tire, it's a rubber a rubber texture is pretty easy uh, in cycles, but we're going to do a little bit more than the normal rubber. Let's zoom in here on the wheel. So we're going to first start by adding a new one, new one, and we're going to use this shader throughout. You know, on these like the window lining and things like that. So we're just going to call this rubber and the first thing that we're going to do is let's just set the diffuse to, we're going to change from diffuse to mix such that then we can feed in both a a diffuse and a glossy that just automatically sets up the nodes for us and just gives us a little bit of a head start and we're going to set these colors to a dark darkish gray and i'm just copying my color from my previous one uh, but you can see here it's you know about 10 percent grayish and we're going to do the same thing here, but then make this one slightly lighter for the glossy. And right now, those are just mixing between the two. Uh, let's go and add it to the treads, too, just so that we can see it. It's a tire tread, and this is uh, rubber, right? You can ignore some of these other colors, or these other ones that I added in, and that have the fake users. That's my mistake. I should have cleared those out. Well, there we go. We'll just add it to those. There we go. So now we can see it. Okay. We're going to set the roughness on the glossy to about 0.25, ought to be just about enough. And then we're going to mix these two with a texture. So, you know, I don't, I don't want the rubber to have a perfectly consistent feeling. You know, that would imply perfect rubber. But seeing as these are tires, you know, they're going to be a little rougher. They're, um, you know, just due to the manufacturing process. They're not going to be this perfectly smooth rubber that you might have on, like, your mouse or your keyboard or anything like that. So we want to give a little bit more variation of those. So we're just going to add in a texture and a noise texture. And then we're going to feed this color into the factor there. That will just give us some variation here. But just to make sure we can see it, let's set the scale up to 20. Oops, 20. And just so you can actually see this, if we set this to say green, you can start to see what happens. So it just adds a little variation so it's not a consistent glossy coating or anything like that. Uh, let's just paste that back in there and make it a little bit lighter. There we go. Okay, and that's pretty much all we need to do for that. So that gives us our rubber. Uh, we can go ahead and add this rubber to a couple other things. One is the, the window trim here. Uh, let me just go and select it. It's this one, right? All right. This guy, window liner. We're going to give it the rubber. Uh, and let me just kind of remove a couple of these other shaders that weren't supposed to be in here like those and like that just get rid of these my mistake for that okay that should be it so now we'll give this back to the rubber there we go so now that adds in uh, we're also going to add the rubber to this piece here so we'll just go into edit mode we're going to select this we're going to add a new material. This one will be our rubber. And we'll click Assign. Then we're going to select this piece of the mirror and the two pieces coming out. These are going to get the car paint shader, so we'll add a new shader. And this will be the car paint. We'll click Assign. Uh, and then let's go ahead and create the mirror as well. The mirror is really, really easy. We're just going to add a plus. We're going to add a new one. And this will be mirror. And we're just going to do a glossy with like a 0 0.001 reflection or roughness. That way it's almost perfectly glossy. And if we are to rotate around this, you should be able to see it like that. Okay, so, you know, really, really, really basic. Um, nothing more than that. And let's see. So we're making, making good progress. You know, we've got a good few shaders to go still. Um, since they're fairly prominent, uh, I want to create a couple more. Uh, one was actually, let's do, let's grab the nuts here. Those are going to get our uh, our wheel rims, this one here, and then there's also our disc brake right back in here is going to get the wheel rims, 
And then we're actually going to make a variation on this. So let's render this now. And what we want to do is we want to make a, a red variation for the disc break itself here, or for the break. So let's add a new one, and we'll add a, we're going to give it the wheel rims, and then we're going to duplicate this material by clicking the four, and this one is going to be, uh, we'll just call it disc break. You know, it's very specific. Actually, let's do wheel underscore disc break. And I can't, oh, there we go, okay. And we're just going to give this one then a, a red color. So we'll just grab the red, similar to the car paint shader. We're just going to paste that in, something like this. And we'll go ahead and do it in the viewport as well so we can see it. And I forgot to click Assign. There we are. Okay, so there we go. So that then just starts to show up and gives us that shader. Okay, uh, we're making really good progress. But let's go on and, you know, a couple more. Uh, let's now grab our front grate here. Oops. So in the camera view, we just want this grate right here. And we're just going to make a generic metal material for this. And this will be similar to this. We're just going to make a chrome shader. So it's going to be similar to this, but it's going to be more reflective. So let's add a new one. And we'll just call this chrome because we're going to use it in a few other places. Again, this is going to be a glossy. We'll give it a... Not quite perfect white, but just, you know, a little bit less than that. And this will be, say, 0 0.05, maybe. Uh, or actually, you know, 0 0.025. We want it fairly, you know, fairly reflective. Chrome is very, very reflective. Um, that ought to be pretty good like that. Let's also go and give it to our little, our little horse emblem. Um, the horse emblem is actually going to get a bump map as well to, or a, a shader or texture to also work with the the horse silhouette uh, but work for the time being we'll just give it the chrome and then we have a couple other pieces that should get chrome uh, we're not going to worry about them for the time being though because we're almost done setting up uh, the basic shaders and then i'm going to kind of i'm going to pause the recording for a moment so that we can get through the rest of them you know at this point we've got most of them done but i'm going to take you through just a couple more And those couple more. Uh, first of all, on the um, the the headlight glass here. So let's add a new material for this. Or actually, you know what? Let's give this the glass material first. So it's glass underscore windows, and that will work temporarily for the for the moment. But let well no. Let's actually go and finish it now. Let's go and duplicate this now, and we're going to call this headlight underscore cover. Uh, that way it's just, uh, you know, it's part of the headlights and it's clear. And in this, we're going to use this same basic shader that we have here, but we're going to take it a little bit further. And the way that we're going to take it further is we're going to add in a glossy shader right down here. So we'll just add in a shader and a glossy. And we're going to leave this at a perfect, um, we'll, we'll do it 0 0.01, make it pretty reflective. We're going to duplicate our mix shader. We're going to drop the glossy into the bottom here, and then we're going to grab our light path node, and this time for the light path, um, or excuse me, no, not for that, uh, for the for the mix shader, we're going to mix this based on a Fresnel. So we're going to do input and Fresnel, and we're going to drop that right in here, and that immediately should start to work. So now we have this, again, that kind of plastic coating over the top of it, that will, you know, it behaves more like plastic rather than glass and gives us these very, very nice reflections. All right, uh, let's do the inside of the headlights now. So with the headlights, like I'm just gonna hide these and you can see the interior here is all modeled. So most of this, such as this piece here, is just gonna get the chrome. So this one is gonna be chrome. Uh, this piece will be chrome. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Render this again. Uh, this piece right here will be chrome, and that just about does it. As soon as this finishes building, I should have cash BBH cash on, but maybe I don't. Performance. Uh, let's just go ahead and set this. We're gonna. Uh, I think static BBH is faster.
Okay. Uh, well, yeah, we'll just we'll stick with dynamic. That way we can move objects around without having to rebuild. But that'll be fine. All right. So as soon as this, oops, I, my bad. Uh, while this is going, uh, we're going to go ahead and start in on the the next shaders. So the next one that I want to do is the actual bulb cover. So you can see here that I have the actual uh, bulb cover right here. And if we move this, well, there's the prevalent side. Here's the actual cover. So this just needs to be that clear glass again. So we're just going to give this the same. Uh, this one actually will be glass. So let's just give this the glass windows. And in fact, you know, let's just name this. It doesn't really need to be windows. Let's just name it glass. Okay, so that gives that immediately starts to work. Uh, let's now hide this. And this piece, this interior piece, is going to be chrome again because it's, you know, this is the kind of parabolic dome here that is reflecting the light out so that we get good, you know, light cast. And then this is our actual light bulb. So the light bulb, we're going to go ahead and call this as um, light underscore headlight underscore bulb. And we're going to give it an emission. And we're going to set this to be kind of a yellow color. About something like that. That ought to work. Make it a little bit brighter. And we're going to set the strength up to 25. And this will show up just pretty much solid white. Um, but that's good because we want really, really bright lights in here so that it works with our compositing glow later on. So now if we just leave that, we can unhide our remaining pieces. And there you can start to see how it shows up under the glass. Very, very cool. All right, so that's all fine and dandy. Uh, let's do the next thing now, which is to actually set up the reflector on the inside. So on the inside here, you can see that I have the actual reflector modeled uh, kind of poorly. I'm not real happy with the way that I modeled it, but it works. Um, this reflector, we're just going to add in a new one, and this is going to be our headlight uh, re Reflector, and we're going to give this a really nice orange color, say something like that. And so you can see, you know, it's just left of red. And we're going to give it a reflection of, say, 0 0.01. And that should show up here, maybe. Let's see if we hide our glass, just double check it. Uh, yeah, so there it's showing up. So once we, um, you won't see it initially it, um, through the glass because it's, yeah, it just basically needs more light passes. But as you have more light going through it, you'll start to get better results through that. Uh, and you'll start to see some of the, the orange. You can see, you know, in here, we can see the orange popping through there. So it's just, it just needs more samples for that to start showing up. So just something to be aware of. Okay. We're starting to run pretty low on time, um, getting fairly quick here. So I'm going to do one last shader, and then I'm going to set up the, rema or the remaining shaders. They're all really, really quick and simple. Um, and then in part two, we're not going to be able to finish this today, but then in part two, we'll go in and do all of the compositing. So this last shader that I want to do real quick here is these metal grates. So metal grates are kind of cool. They're just, just basically planes, and then we're going to, we're um, putting in a texture then to generate it. So what we'll do is first let's add a new material to it and this one we're just going to call mesh and we're going to give it a, a glossy shader. We want it to be basically metal uh, so we're just going to give it a dark gray glossy say something like like that whoops nope like that ought to work. We'll feed in the surface and then we're going to use a texture then to control the transparency. So let's hit Shift A, add in a shader, transparent. And then we'll also drop in our mix shader to control these. We're going to drop this one into the top. And then we're going to use a texture to control which parts of this are transparent and which parts are not. So under shader, uh, excuse me, under color, no, texture, we're going to choose image texture. And we're going to click open. And in the textures folder, you can see I have this metal lattice. We're just going to, you can see what it looks like if I go into icon view. It's just basically a black and white alpha image. And we load that in. And one thing to note is on this, um, I do have, let me just 
bring up a UV image editor. I have the UVs on this set up, just something like this, where if we load in the metal lattice here, metal lattice right there, okay, you can see that it's proportional, so it's just, you know, nothing real spectacular, just something real quick uh, with just a basic automatic projection. And now if we um, connect this, the color, to the factor, immediately we get our mesh. Now, if we want to control the size of the mesh, we can add in a mapping node. So mapping right here, we can drop this in here. Uh, we also, if we do that, we also need to add in a, a texture coordinate for the UVs, because uh, the mapping image textures by default read from the UVs, but the mapping node does not. So if we just drop in the UVs, then, then it works again. And now we could use the size, say, you know, if we want to make these a little smaller, we can set the scale to say 1.5 along each of the axes, and that makes them a little bit smaller. And that's it for the mesh texture. You know, then we'll use that same mesh texture on a couple of these, these other pieces, um, such as the side grates right here. So, oh, well, that one actually already there. Uh, I think actually that's all of, I think they're all, yeah, they're all one object. Okay, there we go. Uh, there should actually also be metal grates here, but I unfortunately neglected to model that uh, for so future to do. Uh, the last shader then that I want to set up is the side reflector. So the side reflector is this little guy right here, and it's kind of cool because uh, the way that we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it strictly procedural. So let's go and select this little thing right there. Okay, front reflector, and we're going to add in a, a new material. We're going to call this front underscore reflector. And this one is a little bit more complex. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we're going to affect the, um, a well, we're going to actually, first of all, let's set the diffuse color, which is going to be our kind of our bright orange. So say something like that. And then we're going to mix this with our, our glossy again. So let's add in a shader and glossy. We'll drop in our, our mix node. And you know the first thing we wanna do is we just wanna drop in, add that plastic effect. So with this, you know we'll drop in our Fresnel as well. So input and Fresnel, pull that in there. And that then gives us our plastic effect. Now, just due to where the lights are, you know we're not gonna really see that on there, but that's okay. The next thing that I want to do is we're actually we're actually going to expand on this a little bit. Uh, we're going to pull these back, and we're going to duplicate the mix shader. We're going to drop these in here. Let's uh, actually add in a second glossy shader, which will connect here. So we'll just replace that there. So we have two glossy shaders. Uh, first glossy shader is you know well actually both of these are going to be uh, basically 0 0.001. Just make them real nice and reflective. And in this one, we're going to mix, basically we want to add in the ridges here so that we get reflective sides. The way that we're gonna do this is by using a wave texture. So let's just add in a texture and a wave, and we'll just feed this uh, right into the factor node here. So we'll just choose factor, and immediately you, you can start to see what's happening, but right now it's way too large. So let's just scale this up to say 50. And ooh, that's kind of cool. All of a sudden what it starts to do. Uh, so what we wanna do now is we want to uh, add two of these and then basically mix them together uh, using mapping nodes. So we're gonna duplicate this. We're then going to add in a color and a mix so that we can mix these two together. And just such that they both contribute to the result and it's not just a 50-50 mixed, we're gonna set this to add, say mix and add, with the value at one. <clears throat> Excuse me, voice is getting a little raw. Um, but then we want to just flip one of these. So let's add in a, a, a vector and mapping. And we're gonna use these on both of them. So we'll just drop these in. Just like that. And then to make sure that the coordinates don't get messed up like they have, we're gonna add in an input texture coordinate and we're gonna use the generated on both these. So if we just select the node and then select the other one, we can hit F and it'll automatically fill those. And then we're just gonna set this rotation here to negative 90 and 
90. And that way they come up almost as, you know, kind of an X there and give us our very cool, nice result. Okay, now it's not quite there yet though, uh, because we need to do a bit more with this, obviously. So one of the things that I wanna do is to give us a little bit more color control. So let's take these, we're gonna drop them over, move them over a little bit, and we're gonna use a converter and a color ramp. Let's just drop that one on here. And then on the color ramp, we're just going to uh, set both sides to black, say like that and like that. And then we're going to add in two nodes in between them, moving them over. And each of these we're then going to make white. And this will then give us just kind of a nice gradient there. You can see kind of what it's just made it a little bit more subtle. Uh, and you know, if we drag these around, that will actually affect the way that the, the color is being mixed there. All right, and we're gonna just duplicate this. We're gonna take it down to that one as well for that. And that should be perfect. Next, we're going to invert this color. So let's just hit color and invert. And this is just um, so that we don't get those black spots. We get, you know, before, if we just, if we mute this, you can see that the, uh, well, I don't know why that didn't work. If we drop that in there, you can see we get, you know, this kind of bluish black. It's actually just like a really reflective surface uh, and it's reflecting the world and whatnot. And it's, you know, where we want the raised surfaces. Well, we just want that to be in the crevices rather than the, the uh, mountains. And so if we just right flip that, then seemingly the mute node did not work. Um, then that will give us exactly that. And that then is our reflector node. Now it may not look like much right here, but if you kind of rotate around, it will work fairly well. And the main thing is that it works, you know, from an angle. It doesn't really reflect in the same way that a reflector reflector works, but it gives us a pretty nice result, at least for our rendering. We can maybe take this orange, maybe a little bit darker and then save that. And I think that will be good to go. Okay, so I wanna set up one last shader. Um, about to lose my voice here and try and make this quick. I know it's getting a little bit long, but on the, the horse here, I want to just set up the actual shader for it, just so that you can see the difference, where right now, you know, it's just basic, it's just a fairly crappy uh, kind of outline model with some kind of a little bit of added depth. But what we're gonna do is we're going to um, mix our glossy with a diffuse like this, add our shader and a mix, drop these together. We're gonna set the factor say about 0.3 and then this diffuse, we're going to feed in an image texture. This image texture then is actually the actual Ferrari horse logo that has all the reflections built in, all the depth, etc. And by just feeding that in then, that's really just gonna kind of fake it. So where that's not, those aren't actual reflections, it just kind of looks that way and it looks kind of cool. Um, so it just helps add a little extra depth to it that otherwise we would have to either sculpt or displace or you know something like that. You could also feed this into the displacement if you wanted, um, but you know it's not really meant to be a displacement map, and so it just kind of gets a little bit messy. Uh, so I just left it like that. You know, from from a distance like this, it looks quite good. And so that's it for for the oh, except for the fact that we added that to the Chrome, which we definitely don't want to do. So let's just. Let's uh, duplicate this Chrome, and this is going to be our emblem horse logo, okay? And then on our regular Chrome, let's select it and get rid of all these things. If we just select all these, hit Control X, that will maintain this connection right there, and so that we don't have to remake it. Okay, so that's it for the shaders. Um, the rest of them, you know, we've got our emblems here. It's nothing nothing more than a glossy shader than uh, with a UV texture. I've already got all the textures supplied. So really, really, really easy to create. Um, and uh, the, with these emblems, it's again, that same kind of plastic coating where, you know, we want a glossy coating on this. So it's the glossy mixed with a diffuse based on a Fresnel. I gotta add the black rubber to behind these grates. I'm gonna add the wheel cap right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do those. Uh, and then I will see you on the next part. So these are, again, the, re the remaining ones are fairly simple. Um, or actually, you know what? 
No, uh, since we've got some of the tail lights back here that are a little bit more complex, we are actually gonna go ahead and do the remaining shaders, but we will do them on part two. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in a moment or not in a moment, but fairly soon, you know what I mean.